Hi, welcome to ACE Teachers Online, a series of tutorial videos for students. My name is Ross, and today we'll be going through a difficult Section 3 UMAT question of missing segment. Today we're going to be looking at a more difficult Section 3 question, which involves us looking at a large 3x3 three three grid and seeing what kinds of patterns of contribution appear within that grid to produce the missing segment. As you can see from the diagram, what we've got here is a grid, and we've got a missing segment within the grid. So this is a missing segment style question. This grid is a, composed of a three by three grid of larger squares, and then within each of those large squares, we've got a smaller three by three grid, which is variably filled with either white space or black squares. So when we look at a missing segment question like this, the most important thing to do is to examine the scaffold first, which is what I have just done. I've looked at exactly what the composition of this particular question is, so I can then work out how I might go about finding the answer. And from my experience, I would know that using these three by three grids, what's probably going to happen is there's going to be some sort of pattern going by rows or by columns, by far the most common thing to occur. So that's what we're going to look at first. If you guys have any experience with any UMAT questions, you probably know that the most common pattern for something like this would be is that we examine a cross a row. And usually, somehow, we're going to add the first square to the second square and produce this third square, okay? So the most common pattern for that is that when we add the two squares, we consider which elements are present in both squares. So if I were to sketch up for this top row those elements, I would see that for the first square, I've got this square and this square. But for the second one over here, I've got this one here, this one here, and the final one up the top. That's what I would expect the resultant square to look like, which is not really what this looks like, okay? So this is becoming quite apparent to us that this is not a typical Section 3 missing segment style question. So after I've looked at this, I would have to think to myself, where am I going to go next? So you would always go for the next most common type of pattern. And the next most common type of pattern would be to go down the columns, okay? So if we're going to go down the columns, we would consider a similar kind of relationship. Somehow that the first square adds with the second square to produce this third square here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch that out as well. The top square has a kind of setup like this, okay? Now the second square we're also going to fill in on this diagram. You'll notice that I've written a times two on this square here. That's a double up. That means that that square appears in both of those two original larger squares. The most common type of pattern to occur in these missing segment style questions is for when there is a double up, the resultant square that's produced at the end will not have that element in it. The basic rule is, is that if they match, then they're going to disappear, okay? If they don't match, then we'll, they'll be retained through to the final image. So I would expect that in the light final square down here, it would look like this. It's close, but it's not quite, okay? So I'm going to have to start looking for something else. So we've looked across the rows and we've looked down the columns and we've seen that neither of these have worked. So what we need to do is we need to look at some alternative strategies. Now, there are lots of ways different squares can contribute to produce another square in a, nine by nine, in a three by three grid such as this, okay? The first way that we can also consider is down to the co corners, that is, that maybe these two squares produce the corner square, or maybe even these three squares produce a corner square. That is not particularly common, but it has been seen before, so it's maybe something that you could consider. I'll leave you guys to try that at home. It doesn't work, but you can try it anyway. The other one that we're going to consider today is the pattern of contribution by which, on the middle of a side, we've actually got contrib contributions from the middle square and the top and the bottom square. So if I were to draw that in a diagram, it would look something like this. Now, 
Now this pattern is difficult because it is an unnatural, uncommon form of contribution. But after that point, it is the same rules of addition that I have just showed you for the rows and the columns. It's fairly straightforward after this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw just that component for the left side of the grid. So these three squares are the squares that will contribute to produce the central square. So now what we're going to do is we're going to count how many times each of the element squares appears. We can see in the top right corner, there is one square here and one square here. It appears twice. We can see in this middle top square, there's none here, none here, but one here. It appears once. Top left, we can see it doesn't appear here, here or here. Never appears. We can go through all of the other squares in the same way. So for the middle left, we've got, we've got it appearing once. For the absolute middle, no times. For the right over here, no times. Bottom right is going to be no times again. When we get to the bottom middle square, we've got it appearing twice. And then when we get to the bottom left square, we've got it appearing just once. So now remember our rules. When something doesn't appear at all, it's not going to be a black square. It's just going to be retained as a white square. When a black square stays in there only once, it is going to come through as a black square in the final resultant square, like this. But when we get two squares stacking on top of each other, it's a deletion. Very common pattern. So none of these other squares are going to produce part of the grid. And what we get now is this final picture, which we can see over there is the actual middle square. We've verified this pattern for one side only of this, this grid. I'll leave it up to you to try it with the other two sides that we can see. We can see this side fully and we can see this side fully. So you can test those out and verify the pattern with both. In the actual UMAT exam, I would definitely recommend that you try it out with every side. Don't just see the pattern on one side and assume it's true. Sometimes they rig the questions so that the pattern persists in only one part, just to try and catch out those students who are rushing. So let's go through and see what's going to come out for the very last square. Our missing segment is up here, okay? So we need to track the presence of the squares in all the other surrounding squares. We're now going to consider how these squares will contribute to the middle square using the same pattern as we used before. So we're going to draw up our grid. And now we're going to consider each square in turn. So let's go to the top left. It appears only once between the three outer squares. The top middle will again appear once. The top right again appears once. Going down to the middle left square, it will appear once. The absolute middle square appears once. The middle right square doesn't appear in any of the ones present, so that's going to be zero. Going down to the bottom left, it appears once. Going down to the bottom middle, it appears three times. And going down to the bottom right, it's going to appear once. So now I've got to consider using our rules what's going to happen in this particular occasion. We can see that what we've got is we've got overlapping black squares. These are all going to carry through 
to the final image. So we can colour those in. Next we've got one that doesn't appear at all. Okay? This one's going to disappear. This one's going to be a blank space. Okay? Finally, we've got one where there are three black squares. For these three black squares, we've got to consider how this would behave. There are two ways that you need to be able to do this. The first one is logically. The second one is empirically by the evidence from the actual diagram. As always, it's better to use evidence than just logic. So the best way to do this is to check what has happened in previous portions of the pattern. As I said, you needed to have checked all the different sides. And when you were checking the bottom side here, you would have found the following. The bottom middle square appears three times and contributes to produce this square here. That black square is retained. We now have evidence that that is the rule. When three black squares appear, it will be retained into the final image. That's what we need. Now we can say that the final picture is going to look like this. Therefore, that the answer is going to be D of the options we showed you before. Thanks so much for watching. To see our previous video, click here. To see our next video, click here. And for more information on ACE, click on the link down below.